Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. Before Johnny Cash would wow the world with songs like I Walk the Line, Ring of Fire, A Boy Named Sue, Get Rhythm, and his cover of Trent Reznor's Hurt. The Man in Black was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and was honored with 17 Grammy Awards, 9 CMAs, and countless others. I just wanted to, to confess to some errors and some fallacies along the way and accepting all of this praise and compliments, I thank you very much. Before Joaquin Phoenix would take on the role of Johnny Cash in the 2005 biodrama Walk the Line. Joaquin actually had the opportunity of meeting Johnny Cash before making the film. Turns out Cash was a big fan of the film Gladiator and had this to say. When you said your son squealed like a girl when they nailed him to the cross and your wife moaned like a whore as they ravaged her again and again and again. <laughs> I love that part. Johnny Cash was the original bad boy. He was front and center during the birth of rock and roll, recording his first hit in 1955. He literally came out of the same recording studio as Elvis Presley. Before he knew it, he was performing 300 shows a year and taking all sorts of drugs to keep on going. As admired and praised as he is for his incredible music, his his bad boy behavior is also the stuff of legend. He nearly lost it all in the 60s due to a serious substance abuse problem. About the time we were doing these tours, we, uh, we discovered amphetamines, and, or I did. Anyway. <laughs> He's the only person to ever successfully be sued by the US government for starting a forest fire, an ostrich attack left him with five broken ribs, and once he broke a toe while kicking the bars of his cell when he got locked up. Johnny Cash feared only two things, snakes and planes. So you gotta imagine he never watched a certain film. I have had it with these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane. I love me a bad boy and I'm proud to say that I share the same birthday as Johnny Cash, February 26th. That's why we're dropping this video today in honor of him and his family encouraged people to dress in black on this day to commemorate his birthday. Feel free to leave a happy birthday message for him or me in the comments down below. Do you, do you have any regrets about what you've done or do you think it's, I mean, there's so much you've accomplished. I, mean, I used to, but don't, I don't, I, I forgave myself. No. What's going on guys? My name is Michael McCredden, documenting the life and career of Johnny Cash, here for you on Before They Were Gone. In the past, we've made videos on Elvis Presley and Marilyn Monroe. Be sure to check those out and as always, let me know in the comments down below who you want me to document next. Johnny Cash was born J.R. Cash on February 26, 1932 in Kingsland, Arkansas, and he is of mainly English but also Scottish and Irish ancestry, which throws me for a loop. I swore he was a little bit native, but no, turns out he's not. His parents named him J.R. Cash as a compromise between the names John and Ray. His parents Ray and Carrie Rivers Cash were poor Southern Baptist sharecroppers, and J.R. was one of seven children. At the age of three, his family relocated to Dyes, Arkansas, where the family lived in a five bedroom house and farmed 20 acres of cotton and other seasonal crops. By the age of five, J.R. was already working on the farm, and he would eat cotton buds for food. The motto on the Cash family coat of arms reads, better times will come, which is a pretty good representation of the misery they were dealing with living through the Great Depression. Johnny witnessed death as young as five years old when his dad shot the dog for eating the table scraps. They were meant for the hogs. Then at the age of 12, his brother died after being pulled into an electric saw. Soon after, Johnny took up smoking, and the only other leisure activity he enjoyed was music. Uh, we grew up listening to country music on the radio from Memphis, which was only 40 miles away. The first song he remembered singing was the hymn, I Am Bound for the Promised Land. His mother sensed his passion and scraped together enough money so that he could take singing lessons. But after three lessons, his teacher told him never to deviate from his natural voice. Back then, he had a high tenor voice, so at least that changed. In 1950, Cash graduated high school and left Dyes to seek employment. He ventured to Pontiac, Michigan for a brief gig at an auto body plant. That summer, he enlisted in the US Air Force as John R. Cash because the military required a full first name. He was sent for training at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas, and that is where he met his future wife, Vivian Liberto, at a roller skating rink. How cute. Hello, Vivian. How's my sweetheart? Yours is all right, but he's lonesome for you as usual. For the bulk of his four years in the Air Force, Cash was stationed in Landsberg, West Germany, where he worked as a radio intercept officer eavesdropping on Soviet radio traffic. It was there he purchased his first guitar for $5. During his time in the Air Force, Johnny had a cyst removed on his face. Supposedly, the doctor was drunk during the operation and messed up during surgery, leaving Johnny with a scar for the rest of his life. 
While abroad, Johnny had kept in touch with Vivian via love letters. After his discharge, the two wed in July of 1954, and the two settled in Memphis, Tennessee. There he worked as best he could as an appliance salesman, but he was also pursuing music on the side, and enrolled in radio class at Keegan School of Industry, hoping to become a DJ. He teamed up with a couple of mechanics, Marshall Grant and Luther Perkins, and they would gather with their wives to play music, most of it gospel. Johnny Cash's first gig with the Tennessee Two was playing for a group of elderly ladies in a church basement. Cash adopted his signature all black suits as a good luck charm after he wore a black t-shirt and jeans to his first public performance. After Johnny Cash convinced Sam Phillips at Sun Records to let him perform in the same studio that launched Elvis to fame, Sam had no interest in their gospel music, but gave them a chance to return with some original work. Sam was impressed with their songs Hey Porter and Cry Cry Cry. Porter was released in May of 1955, and later that year, Cry 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 peaked to number 14 on the Billboard charts. Within a few years, Johnny Cash and the Tennessee Two had scored mega hits with songs like So Doggone Lonesome, Folsom Prison Blues, and of course, Walk the Line. This was a time to celebrate and Johnny fathered four daughters with Vivian through 1955 to 1961. Although he wasn't doing a whole lot of fathering, besides just paying the bills. While on tour, Johnny and his band members started getting into trouble. They had bought 500 baby chickens and let 100 of them loose on each floor of a hotel. At another hotel, they flushed cherry bombs down the toilet and blew out the plumbing. By the 60s, Johnny Cash was a megastar who had moved his family to sunny Los Angeles. He would tour as many as 300 days a year. He was rubbing shoulders with the other stars of this era, including Elvis, Neil Diamond, Jerry Lee Lewis, Bob Dylan, Willie Nelson, and the Tennessee Two had expanded to become the Tennessee Three. Oh yeah, and they had a new member in their entourage. Her name was June Carter. Due to Johnny's fear of flying, he would travel America in a bus he named Jesse James. June Carter began touring with Johnny more and more, and the two had sparked up an infatuation with one another, but due to her two divorces and his marriage, well, the two wouldn't wed until 13 years after they first met. Creatively, they were a match made in heaven and June co-wrote what became one of the Man in Black signature songs, Ring of Fire. If he weren't busy enough, he had also started acting, appearing in the film Five Minutes to Live and a handful of western TV shows. On top of all of this, he was drinking heavily and taking all sorts of drugs. He would often drive Jesse James out into the desert for methamphetamine binges. One time the camper had an oil leak that caused the Los Padres National Wildlife Refugee to catch fire. The blaze killed almost every endangered condor in the refuge, to which which Cash replied, I don't give a damn about your yellow buzzards. When the judge asked Cash why he did it, Cash said, I didn't do it. My truck did, and it's dead, so you can't question it. Cash found himself in prison several times. The most reported incident was when he was busted with prescription drugs in his guitar crossing the Mexico US border. I wouldn't let anybody influence me into thinking I was doing the wrong thing by singing about death, hell, and drugs. In 1966, his wife Vivian had finally had enough with Johnny's absence, bad behavior, and his relationship with June, so she filed for divorce. He would be in a bad place for the next few years, but continued to be successful with hit songs and Grammy wins. Then in 1968, he finally had his wake up call with a near death experience where he stated he was saved by God. Johnny got help from June to help clean up his act, and the two married that year. And Johnny, well, he got started on a new project known as the Johnny Cash Show. In early 1970, Cash and Carter experienced more joy with the birth of their first and only child, John Carter Cash, and things were pretty good up until the 80s. The secret for a happy marriage? Separate bathrooms. <laughs> There were a few bizarre events including Johnny getting attacked by his own ostrich and he was put on painkillers. He quickly became addicted and checked himself into the Betty Ford Clinic and while there he made friends with Ozzy Osbourne. In 1980 he became the youngest living person to be elected to the Country Music Hall of Fame and he kept busy working with his old pals and releasing three studio albums between 1985 and 1995. In 1988 Cash again went under the knife, this time for a double bypass heart surgery. Oh, I forgot to mention that he was also also friends with all of the American presidents, with Richard Nixon being his all time fave. <laughs> what a guy. Well, I'm not a crook. By the late 1990s, his health was deteriorating drastically, but he continued making music. In 2002, he released a mix of originals and covers, including songs from the Beatles and, of course, Trent Reznor's of Nine Inch Nails song, Her. Who doesn't love that song? Got me through one too many breakups. In the video, he appeared frail as his health was deteriorating drastically. Then in 2003, he experienced his biggest setback to date with the death of his soulmate, June Carter, on May 15, 2003. Johnny passed away a few months later from complications of diabetes on September 12, 2003. Where do we go? When do we die, you mean? Yeah. 
Oh. Well, we all hope to go to heaven. As for the rest of the story, well, that's pretty much it, because this is before they were gone. My name is Michael McCrudden, and we could continue telling you this story in an after they were gone video, but you guys need to request it down below. There's some other videos down here to click on. Be sure to browse around, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys in another video.